Yeah, we don't have time. We're going to have time. And it was Johnny. So we've oh, talked to okay. sorry. We talked to Nick about um, having an opportunity to discuss this be at finance before it went to the full board. So it really never made it onto a real agenda. It was just in the preparation for the board leadership meeting. It was never published. So anyway, we got back on track and we're coming through the committee meeting. And so um, Nick, I'm just going to turn it over to you because I really um, appreciate your skill level in, in the BPT stuff and in the tax office in general. But I think that um, when you explained it to me, it made a lot more sense than the document that I read. So hopefully um, yeah. that will help the board members and they can deal with questions too. A absolutely. And it's it sounds more complicated than it, than it probably is realistically. So um, earned income tax and even local service tax is mainly governed by state law Act 32. Um, and Act 32 lays out a, a variety of ways that you can enforce and collect that. Um, when the school district passed the business privilege uh, most recent resolution, it outlined procedures for civil litigation, but never outlined any procedures for criminal litigation. Um, and I know criminal sounds scary, but it's not as scary as it sounds. Realistically, what that means is if a taxpayer is not in compliance, if they're not filing their taxes, if they're not responding to our letters, we can, for example, schedule an audit with that taxpayer. If that taxpayer doesn't show up for the audit, that's outlined as, as a violation of the code, as a violation of the law. And we would be able then to go to the magistrate, the magistrate could schedule a hearing and um, we could, the taxpayer could be fined. Um, we would request the magistrate do like a sliding scale, maybe $0 for the first offense, $20, $50. We don't have control over that, the magistrate does and they can find them up to, I think, $500. Um, but we would suggest to the magistrate that $500 would only be in extreme circumstances. Um, and that's a way that we can get the taxpayers to respond to us, that we can enforce the tax, enforce violations of the tax. Um, really, we can do that same exact thing through the civil litigation process, but it's more costly for the district and the taxpayer, and it takes more time. Um, so for a violation here, we would just need to file a complaint with the magistrate. The magistrate would schedule a hearing. Both parties would show up. If, if both parties show up, you would discuss that in front of the magistrate, and then the magistrate would have a finding um, and could issue any penalties or restitution if there were. With the civil litigation, you have to file a formal complaint to court. You have to wait for the court to schedule a hearing. You have to file briefs or discovery processes. And it's, it's a lot of time and it's inefficient really for the district and for the taxpayer. So this gives us another means of enforcing the tax in circumstances where it makes the most sense to go through this, this quicker, cheaper process for everyone. Um, and that's mainly when there's already a delinquent tax due with their audit that has been scheduled and those taxpayers haven't responded. And really, the reason why I mentioned earned income tax and local service tax is it's the same process that's outlined for both of those. So if we audit a taxpayer for earned income tax, they don't show up for an audit. That's the process that we would most likely go through is file a complaint with the magistrate um, for a failure to appear for audit or failure to cooperate with audit. So and this just allows, set up. right, we already have it set up. It's just, the other two taxes. Right, it's just the business privilege um, ordinance or, or resolution doesn't outline a criminal procedure. And we want it to be clear in there that, that we would like to be able to proceed civilly when it makes sense and criminally when that makes sense. Which is consistent with the taxes. Which well. is consistent with the other taxes. Um, so that's what that's what the changes to this resolution does. Um, this was drafted by our special tax counsel with the help of David Lindsay. So David Lindsay did review this um, and suggested that it makes sense and even spoke um, to the magistrate's office just to be sure there weren't any issues with this enforcement method. 
Any questions on the resolution? No, that could be on the agenda. This no, public. we haven't made any decisions about moving forward until I knew the finance committee directed us to do so because I know that the, there's a lot of sensitivity around in our community around anything to do with business privilege checks. And so if you do decide that you want to move this forward, I believe that you that you should consider having um, Nick Grimes do a presentation, a brief presentation to outline that's those same parameters so that um, the, all that information could be communicated to everybody at a second public meeting, because this is considered a public meeting. That would be the second public meeting that you would explain that. I think it's not that difficult to understand, but it should be communicated before you vote. If you decide to move it forward, I agree, and I'm I'm happy. You know, sometimes, like Dr. Martin said, you know, business privilege can be a sensitive issue, and when you attach criminal citation to it, it can it, it can sound scary. When I first read right. it, I would say that. <laughs> um, but I, I really don't think anyone's going to be incarcerated because they don't. I mean, they hearing they could they could be the same through civil litigation. Though. It's part of the penalties outlined in the law, but that's not our intention. Um, by any means with this. It's similar to like if you if you get a speeding ticket, the magistrate schedules a hearing, you can appear, you could say why that speeding ticket wasn't valid. Um, it would be the same thing for us. We would say, you know, they violated the tax law for some reason, just like we do for her income tax and nobody's right. gone to jail for that. Um, and then we would be able to go in front of a magistrate. It's, it's a very similar method from the civil litigation. It's just much quicker and cheaper for both parties. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't feel comfortable about this at all, and I'm just going to say it's because I'm too naive. Um, it's, and I'll tell you why. I, is there any chance that we can replace the word criminal with something else, or legally does it have to be the word, the noun, criminal? It, it has to be criminal because it's a... Okay, okay, that was, okay, that's done. Um... <laughs> What's like what percentages? I'm not asking. I'm not asking the answers, but um, we we always. I okay. What's the time? I don't have to worry about answering this stuff. For us to move this forward, I think we're gonna. The backlash from the community isn't worth it for our perception to do something like this. And I mean, we are on the, you know, is, is the time and cost difference between what we're doing now versus bringing a criminal proceeding in, is it worth it how we're perceived in the public? And I mean, I mean we, I'm saying the district, not we. And that's certainly a consideration, I mean, for the board. I don't know what, I'm not sure what public response you'll get just by passing this. Um, I can tell you on the enforcement side, from my experience in, in other realms and even with EIT, if somebody's scheduled in court for a violation of the law, it doesn't matter whether it's at the courthouse or at the magistrate building, they respond the same way. Um, they don't care if it's, you know, that, that title civil or criminal, they get served the same thing that says you have to appear in court this day for for this complaint. So I'm not sure that on the side of who we're enforcing it against, there'd be much of a change in response from the public. Um, but I, I can't tell you what sort of response you'll get just by passing this as it is. Okay. Well, you, you said there was a. I think we actually, I know you're the criminal non traffic proceeding. I think that's what we're talking about in that area. But if you think about it from the aspect of this hearing would be in front of the magistrate, where the civil would be in front of the judge, there's actually a lower. Court hearing that stands also. Yeah. I well, when you say the time, there's a time and cost difference for the district. Like when you say it's like a, I'm just asking, like, is it 10 cents on the dollar? Is it 50 cents to the dollar? Is it 50% more? Is it uh, as some some way I can visualize this cost time difference. It, it's hard to give an exact, but if we filed a complaint um, in the Court of Common Pleas, for example, it would probably be a few hours of attorney time just filing that, and there would be a filing cost. Um, realistically, I think filing cost is maybe $25 for the magistrate. Um, okay. 
And it's something that depending on their schedule, I don't know how fast they'll be able to schedule that, but it could be resolved in a few months. And a lot of times when they get the notice, we can resolve it between the tax office and that individual in that time. That sort of gives them an incentive to respond to us when all of our other letters and notices and certified mail goes unnoticed up to that point. Um, and then the hearing itself is is much different. Um, you know, there's formal discovery, which would take attorneys' times. It could be pretrial motions, which would take attorney times and could take arguments. So it, it could be the difference between $500 in a year and $25 in three months, or it could be much more depending on the nature of the case. And it sounds like a taxpayer also would incur more money civilly mm -hmm. versus criminal. well that's that those are figures that if that data can come to us in the public then this wouldn't seem so like uh police enforcement action i mean i understand it is a lawful action but again we're, we're not the sheriff in town but we are the sheriff in town you know what i'm saying i don't know that i, I just try to come up with a hard number i don't know about that could like we talked earlier, every case is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Oh, ballpark idea. Well, That's it's like a range, maybe. Right. One of the concerns is... Because if it's not really, if you're really not saving that much time and effort, then is this really necessary? On the taxpayer side, one thing we do have to be careful of is we don't have the authority to tell the judge what to impose. You know, the, the ordinance, that, the, that. the resolution that the school district passed, which is similar to most, is that it's a five, up to a $500 fine for each offense. Um, with cost and imprisonment, not more than 90 days or both. He could so, say five bucks. He could, he could say nothing, you know, sure, oh, zero. they didn't get the notices. We're not enforcing any fines or they could say, we're going to put you in jail for 90 days and $500. But, you know, I, I highly doubt that the <laughs> magistrate would do that, but they have that authority. Um, Is this so, resolution being used by other districts that have the business privilege tax? Um, they almost all have civil and criminal collection procedures. So we're yes. one of the few that don't currently have the civil from from those that I talked to, yes. Well, criminal, I guess we criminal one. Right. That would be really telling to, to, to see if that's if this is what the norm is and we're not the norm. I mean not that we have to be the norm, but if this is the norm, that's really important to know in Pennsylvania. Um and again when and if you give the presentation that data to the public and to the rest of the board is very important, I think. That's a good point. Good point. My personal opinion, I have to pay my business privilege tax. I don't like it. I don't really like right this check out. Are your civil duty? Have to pay it. So if I have to pay it, what else can you pay? Oh, I agree. No, I agree. It's just whether or not if oh, I think I said my piece. Okay. Maybe, I'm not against it. I'm just presentation yeah, for it. include those things we discussed. So that would be at the work session. So there would be time yeah. for the board members to hear it and have another week before they have to cast a vote. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Also gives community members opportunity to ask questions too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. on the matter of the public. Yeah. 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 And I think we should this is obviously a board decision, but at that point, if it seems like can you, I guess my question is, can you pull it from the agenda or would it make more sense to vote and vote no on it if it's something that we're not sure that we want to move forward with for whatever reason? We can always table it. Okay. If we come to the point that we still have some questions and things aren't answered, we'll just table it for the future meeting. I just want to be sure that if we vote it down because we're worried of appearance or anything else, that that doesn't make that appearance worse um, for something that really doesn't change what we're doing it's it's still a law and we still enforce violations of the law my opinion is if you present it just like you did to us here today and you, you explain it in simple terms that everybody can understand the fact that it's actually it seems to make things a little bit more simplified even though there's some big bad words in there i think you're gonna I think you'll get people to understand the fact that it may be actually more efficient to add this option as it, as opposed to just leaving it the way it is. Plus, the fact that the other we already yeah. enforce the, the other LST and EIT. Exactly. And I mean, I, I just think people are unaware. That's right. right. That's they're just unaware. We don't. And yeah, we don't want to add fuel. No fuel. Sure. You no fuel. That, like, and then in, in the public meeting, and you have questions. Yeah. And I can't. I can't believe that I would 
I just, people are going to be. I, I, I can't believe that when all these other things are done, and if it is the norm throughout the state, why we didn't do it. And, and in all reality, we may be able to do it today. <clears throat> um, it, it, the resolution doesn't say that we can't. The resolution just specifies this is the civil collection process. So in talking it about looks more transparent. Right. We There's wanted to be sure that it didn't look like we were, you know, trying to hide right. the ball. It's right. if, if we only outline a civil procedure, then if we're gonna do criminal collection, we would be sure that's all outlined. Right. Right. Uh, but but like I said, if you guys start to get backlash or something, in all reality, most taxpayers that are delinquent in business privilege are delinquent in other taxes. And we would only file one complaint for failure to appear for audit, for example, for failure to pay a tax. And um, we could do that complaint under EIT for that same exact taxpayer anyways. So there's there are some times where we want to do this with this privilege, but it's not like we're missing 30, 40, 50 violations a year that all of a sudden we can't follow up on if we, if we can't pass this. That is a tricky wick. So you don't come across as the sheriff in town jumping on people, taking advantage of. Them. Yeah. All right. Tracy, do you have any questions? She isn't talking. Nope, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. All right. Thanks, Nick. Absolutely. Uh, Thank you. Right now, so we have just a quick question. Oh, sorry. We want that presentation in September. Just a reminder that the September work session is also held at Blacktail. Um, so usually that's October, but we had sh switched it because of the conflicts with planning foliage events. So I just wanted to, do you want that presentation on the resolution on September 7th? If you have enough space, unless there's something special at Bucktail that... We have a, we had, um, there's two things on here that I was looking already. One would be a possible transportation update to the board, but we're not ready for that. We're going to move that to October, yeah. so then the... Be a, the same thing that is about this agenda business privilege tax resolution. They should have been by them. So. Okay, so we're good for the September 7th. Work so, yeah, so. Uh, moving right along, we're going to go to the real estate tax refund. There we go. That is actually next as well. <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay. Um, so this one, I'll, I'll try and walk through. This one sounds, again, sounds more complicated than it, than it probably is. Um, we, on regular occasion, get exonerations from the county assessment, the county's assessment offices. Um, a lot of times, like when a building's taken down or when an assessment is incorrect. And generally, we get those in the same year that the tax bill comes out. So... Um, if a tax bill comes out, county assessment office realizes that there was a mistake or an updated that needed to be done or even part way through the year. If, if something happens, they'll send us a sign exoneration from the assessment office that said this tax bill was, for example, $100,000, um, but the building that was assessed at $50,000 has been removed. The tax bill should have been $50,000. So what we'll do when we're in that same tax year is we actually make an exoneration adjustment to the duplicate, which is then reported to the auditors and everything. So then that tax bill, which was in the original duplicate, the taxes that were assessed had $100,000 assessed value, $50,000 gets exonerated. We send them a revised bill for $50,000, or if they've already paid that, we would refund that portion that's different. In this specific case, it is an exoneration for a previous year, which means that the taxes have already been collected, that duplicate year's already closed out, the money's already been turned over to the general fund in the school district. Um, so this would be a refund to the taxpayer out of the general fund, not out of current year collections. Um, and this was, like I said, like the example I gave, it was for a property, a, a building on a property that was demolished, but was not picked up by assessment for whatever reason. They may not have been, been notified, they may have been notified and missed it, um, but they were taxed on a building that was not there. Um, and, and it's not a, a huge amount, but I put a calculation together. I don't know, it's probably not on there, and I can give you guys a copy if you want. But the reason why it gets kind of complicated is because there was a, an original bill that was issued. They received the homestead exemption on that, which they should not have received because they obviously weren't living there if there was no building there. Um, and then there was also a property sale at the that happened in partway through that year. So the refund request that 
was supplied to the county signed by the owner was only from August 11th or August 22nd forward, which was the time of the sale. So we actually have to then prorate that because it's only the new owners that have requested the refund from the county, the municipality and the school. Um, so the calculation that I have shows that the correct bill should have been 13, should have been based on an assessed value of $13,000, which is just the land value of the property, which would have made the bill paid at discount, which is when they paid it $170.08. Um, the original payment for the bill on the $58,100 assessment was $466. So the overpayment was $295.92. Then we had to prorate that at 88.5% based on the time that the sale happened for the new owner who's requesting the <laughs> refund. So it's a lot of work for a $261.89. <laughs> So it's only two hundred sixty-one dollars and eighty-nine cents. But there's a lot of calculations that go into it, and uh, we felt that should go to the board because it's already been something that's collected to do get closed out and um, part of the, the general fund revenue. Um, it's already been closed out. So, so that was like the twenty-one twenty-two tax year. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's been fixed for the twenty-three tax year. Correct. The bill was actually still wrong in the 23 mm -hmm. tax year, but we were able to exonerate that as part of the current year before those payments made. So once, it, once we refund this money, if we refund it, then it would be divided for it. Yeah, yeah. And the county has already verified that the information is correct. They send us a, a signed assessment sheet um, showing what the correct value should have been. They sent us a sales sheet showing us when the sale happened and how the taxes were prorated. So. The um, county could be doing the same thing that we the county and the municipality should both be doing that for those portions as well. Not that this matters, but what year was the building torn down? Um, it was in March of 21, I think. Uh, March of 22, when our bill came out July of 22. Okay. No. You think that would happen more often? And probably do that. I don't see any problem with the quarter really refunded. You know. Since you're going to be at the work section anyways. Yeah, it's, and again, it's a lot of explanation for a pretty simple. Yeah, we just want $60, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, I, yeah. Cost that much to drive. the right thing over. to do, I mean, our recommendation is that you, you take action on yeah. it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we did we just had that talk about it then, moving forward at that meeting. Yep. So we did do the same explanation we just did. Maybe less numbers. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, it's $261. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bring out the whiteboard and a flow chart. Yep, I just want you guys to know that it was <laughs> Thank you. calculated properly. That was very well described. <laughs> okay, moving right along to the 23-24 budget update. Okay. All right. We'll have Christy bring it up. This is just a high level. We haven't talked budget for a couple of of months, so a couple of slides. So the second slide is just to, to give you the, the final budget numbers that were submitted to PD. The next slide um, to PD that shows um, no shortfall, no use of reserves, and the reserves may be remaining. So just a snapshot of what was submitted to PD. Next slide will show you um, we have more uh, updated numbers for 23-24 from PDE. Basic ed subsidy is $23,956,638. That's actually an increase of about 6.4% over 22-23. So this, this is what I wanted to explain. So it is actually a decrease, however, from what we projected on our 23-24 budget of 37138 So we projected um, a little more than what we actually will, will are projected to receive from the state. From the state, yeah. This is and that's basically all. This whole slide is state. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's basically okay. the next one is. And special. I, can I just interrupt you for one second? Mm -hmm. The numbers that we used for the uh, revenue projections were what was recommended to us by PAS. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So some districts came in higher, some districts Absolutely. came in lower. Yes. Yes. Okay. And, so and we do. We we always take recommendations both from PD and PAS. But again, they so as she said, there are schools that slide in, schools that actually just slide out, and and different variations of the percentages you receive. So then the next one is special ed subsidy, same thing. 
we are receiving a little over 4 million. That's an increase over last year, about 3.1% of 118,666. Uh, again, the, the projected budget, we are, we're a little over by 168,207. The career and technology subsidy, uh, we actually just used last year's numbers. And so we actually have an increase of 62,379, which is a 10% increase from 2223. Is that because more kids are in the program now? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. And we expect the 24, 25 numbers will. And they use last year's numbers. So 23, 24 projections are 22, 23 numbers. Sure. Got and it. So um, <laughs> next year, yes. And you know we've seen an increase in, in the CT students. Um, so that if you add all of your, uh, the increases together, you get the 1.6. Um, total, though, the decrease in the projected budget was $143,066. So not too, honestly, not too far off from what we had projected versus what we'll actually receive. I just wanted to give you a heads up on those. I talked to Jerry about that earlier. I just think looking at it. Eighty-four million dollar budget and only off one hundred forty-three thousand. Two tenths of a yeah. two tenths of a percent of the budget. Absolutely. I did it was low. Yeah, point one six. It's pretty good. <laughs> Easier crystal ball weekly board and got it pretty close. Right. <laughs> the next slide. It just shows you the overview of the revenues and what percent comes from the local sources, 42 uh, percent, state sources, 50 percent, and federal sources, 8 percent. Now, that federal sources includes SR money, so that will be wrong in 24-25. Usually drop somewhere between 3 and 4 percent, but the SR money does include. Yeah, and that, that's why it's because of the SR money. And, and I don't know how many years ago, and it somehow started the slide, local sources were actually higher than state sources. So it could have gone down. Um, but we see that, that that's just not so. And that's not the closing the budget gap, not using any reserves. So that's just uh, an you know, would be interesting. I mean, someday is to see if for the last 10 years, if it's easy to pull the number off the sheets, you um, know, the software. What the local source has been for the last 10 years by year, by budget year, mm -hmm. to see if this is, that would be a snapshot of pre COVID, COVID, and then well, I can't say post COVID, I'm saying sort of post COVID. Yeah, mm -hmm. snapshot to see and then graph that or to see where that versus the population of the district or the number of houses, or I don't know. I'm not saying to, I'm not telling you what to do. <laughs> I'm not, but it would be really interesting to see <laughs> progress. <laughs> oh, I, I never. But it would be really interesting to see that data of the local sources. So we, it'd be interesting to see where the projection is going. Is the graph line going up because the houses are going up? I, I don't know, but so what, what do you think, think it's the doing? So I think it's an interesting point, but help me understand why you feel the need to. Like if that's something that the, the group desires us to, to pull, we can pull it. But I guess help me understand the value of, of that. If if the district's footprint is continually bringing in more money, uh, uh, granted we're raising taxes in, in sporadically here and there and here and there and here and there. But um, it would be interesting to see how much the local taxpayers have actually paid in the last 10 years versus what the... I think what you're going to find, though, is business purpose. That has, I believe, helped move the local... Well, you see, subdivided out residential... Nick, I mean, Nick has already done some of that work, too, because yeah. uh, we've looked at this business privilege tax office, obviously... And it, would be really it yields a huge uh, increase annually in the district since we've started doing that to the tune of is it one million to two million a year? Yeah. Um, well, but Joni, you were saying that the state has more recently passed the ordinance. It has. Right? It has. And that's but yeah. I thought but you yeah. Were going I'm sorry there. about that. But yeah. I thought you were going, and I wouldn't mind seeing and then compare the to the exactly the local taxpayer that paid the state and see where it actually has. Well, that's, and I'm shocked to see the federal state is at 50% because I can't, can't believe 
Okay. Oh, I see what you pointed. Okay. I was reversed on what you're well, Historically, as I remember, it yeah, used to be local was about 50% right. with state and federal combined with the other 50%. Yes. Well, here's so. the other thing, too. I think that might be interesting for the district to know. Here, here's where you could get the value of that comparison is that you can show that, and I believe from, from when I first got here and looked at the state, what this local contribution rate was was like 70 percent and it's less than that now but the budgets are going up so we're getting more help but when you look at the unfair funding formula the lawsuit and what the judge has said needs to happen having that data for your district would also help you um, to advocate to legislators about that um, point so it could be helpful to pull to pull that type of information. That's really interesting. Rick, I've said for you, the biggest travesty is the federal reimbursement, the federal funding. Right. I mean, that 8% is high, it's, but if you look at our total budget, $7 million, that's ridiculous. The, the yeah, feds totally have, yeah, the feds haven't been doing their part for years. And we have to jump through hoops. <laughs> they sit there and tell us what we have to do, make the unfunded mandates, and tell us we have to do this stuff. So I think that's right. That what he started with was a good idea to get a specific comparison between how the state money has gone up. So <laughs> the federal money is stagnated. Like that. Mm -hmm. Which it's, this is not, I mean, you go three or four percent. Right. That's a massive thing. So I think the answer is it's getting better, but it's only a drop in the bucket to right. what really needs to happen. Exactly. Okay. That'll be interesting. Thank you. Okay. We're also just to kind of give you where we're going with budget updates, we'll give you another update in November. Um, and then that would be kind of like an end of the year fiscal report for last school year. So this is kind of where we are right now with the current school year. We'll give you the end. We're, we're, we hesitate to say anything until we're actually done because still some bills are rolling in. <laughs> You're clearing closing out the last year. Um, but we do think that similar to previous years, we'll probably come in with a, a similar um, surplus of around a billion dollars. So that's been consistent. It has. And with where we are. Uh, also with the audit, we'd like to really be 99% done with the audit so that you know, everyone, you know, their closing numbers match our closing numbers and we're confident in what we're saying. Um, publicly, yes. But we feel we'll, we'll be coming in. Um, and I, I, if you recall, that's been very consistent over the last four years uh, with our budget surpluses. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, again, if you look at a million dollars out of the $89 million budget or $83 million budget, that's pretty close to the money. Um, so I don't think we're over budgeting in our projections. I don't think we're under budgeting where we seem to be coming in, even when we have to maneuver for last minute. Uh, next is the interest update. And I see. Yes. Yeah, ask Joni if she would come to, um, to you with an update. We, we had asked you previously to consider some um, other ways for us to earn interest and um, kind of creative ways to add revenue. And so since that's been underway, Joni monitors that regularly. I ask her to give you an update. And also um, there's a proposal to add another half percent to our earnings. So um, she's been really, this is her baby. And so she's gonna explain to you where what we've been able to do so far. And if you would consider um, another half percent option, what that could yield. So currently, actually today, I just transferred over, I think another 600,000. So we have over $10 million in our general fund money market account that yields 4%. So to date, um, we yield about $47,391. Just to kind of give you a comparison of, and that is when we don't actually have a whole lot of money. The real estate from January to June is, is really all basic debt, all state funding. Mm -hmm. So real estate starts rolling in about July. So the July's uh, interest earn was about 18,000. Just for the first 18 days of August, we are, are about 16,000. So you can only imagine how it's going to exponentially uh, increase. We get the payments from PDE that we're due. Yes, right. we have yet to receive. The plot's uh, gonna grow. They, they seem to be uh, on time though. Mm -hmm. you they're, know, coming, they're, they're getting there. straight down. Yes, yes. So that's the uh, general fund money market. The CD, 
at the 5.08% has yielded about $90,000 that's paid out quarterly. So the next pay in September will uh, yield about $119,000. So um, that just gives you an idea of the extra money that we can we can incur. The next piece of that, the X 0.5, so it'd be 4.5%, it's called an ICS, which is an insured actual suite. Um, this was from First National Bank. Do you want me to share that? You, like, share that? you can. Um, basically, high level is uh, it takes the general fund, it takes the money market account. I fund money market account. I actually move money over. This is the next step. That's it's a sweep account, and it actually just sweeps the money over so another and moves it into another account that earns 4.5%. So there's it, no it penalty happens. or no pre. The only okay, caveat <laughs> not that long. Is long, long. It has to have a million dollars in it, but that we've never not had a million dollars sitting in our money market account. It just it just has to have a million dollars sitting over there. So it can I can move every all it's still all um like very liquid very liquid I can flow oh, the whole okay. way through the whole, and if if we don't have a million dollars in it that doesn't mean that just means we aren't going to make about five percent that's that's all that means. okay but you don't get penalized if for some reason someone yeah. made a mistake and it went down you know, to nine hundred dollars. It's, it's where you had another thing you wanted to pull the money out for or whatever yeah there's there's no penalty okay there's no penalty for shutting it. the count down it's not like the cd where if we pulled it out early We'd have to work to work to sure. Yeah. If, if you pull it, if something did happen, we go down below a million dollars. We just revert back to the four percent. We, okay. we, so we lose it's, it, it's, it, it, it just sweeps, but, and then I would just put it back. And then I actually that the money market is not where we pay the, the funds from. We actually pay it in the general fund. So it's actually three count accounts removed, but I think it's just to keep it separate because it earns too much. And what's your estimate of how much this would earn for us? So they actually estimated out that if you have five million in there, it'll earn an extra twenty five thousand for a year. A year. It's, like, a year. it's not huge dividends, but again, you're making money off money you have without hurting. Not anything. Constant, anything. It's not constant. No, it's, it's anything. actually responsible. We're it's totally responsible. Yes. And I, it's I not even a manual board. But this morning, it's true responsibility. Um. And it's a sweep account, so I don't do anything. Okay, and this is the big question. And this will come up. I know. Uh, where is the interest going? Back into the account for now. Okay, because at some point that discussion is going to come up. Like, Absolutely. who decides what they do with that interest? When I think when we open these accounts, I believe when we open these accounts, we decided to just keep reinvesting the interest. Right. At some, some point, point, we that's could what... decide. To absolutely move that into capital, or move and then that in your market for what you want, well, you can assign it. In some place, it could be used for some of the soft costs we have with the current. Absolutely, you, you can say, let's exactly take a half million dollars of the money we've been making on investments that didn't cost us anything. Let's use that for the demolition mm -hmm. rather than take a bond at an interest right. rate. When you figure in March, March is when our CD has made its twelve-year cycle or twelve-month cycle. I'm sorry, and it's going to make somewhere around I think four hundred thousand dollars. Can't help me on that. You might decide this year mark three, 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 three. that's the that's the catch 22 though because right now interest rates probably the highest they're going to move so you want don't want to move them so you don't want to touch the money unless until they start going to <laughs> agree although down. you could also look at it this way if our bond interest rate is seven percent why wouldn't you use your cash well of course if that's you know it. what i mean but and that's why you should have options there, right? you've got <laughs> money to have options <laughs> Which yes. is not where you were before. Yes. So, okay. um, Rob, you want a new tractor? That's what you want. No. I think, <laughs> so I think what we're going to need I'm to do. Kidding. Is, kidding. Now we do have it. We did, do need a tractor. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth. That could be on the uh, agenda for us to be <laughs> board with in September. Also, we discuss that the works uh, works I can mm -hmm. move forward to vote. Okay. I will upload this. To I figured that could it be requires rather. no signatures if the account it requires <laughs> not it requires just, do it. just an approval. <laughs> That's all it requires. But I really wanted interest rates to go down. I know so go actually. But... That's what I really want. Okay. Okay, yes. that's the limited curtain finance office. Okay. So this is really Joni as well, but um just to kind of preface a little bit. 
we've got a lot of options and we can't even narrow that down yet to bring you hey here's three things because there's so many different options okay maybe next month well that's why we need some direction from you this month so that we can get some object or get some of this narrowed down so i did receive and this is high level this is preliminary draw schedule um and if i had to create something now based upon just this draw schedule the problem is I don't know what I don't know what amounts to borrow. I don't know where we are. No more than what you saw in that. And I don't know if we're gonna include demolition. I don't know if we're gonna include the architectural fees we've already incurred. But these are the parts I don't know. So I don't know what the end amount will be. What I do believe will happen, it will be two two different bonds. We'll keep them under $10 million because that would be in a, a lower interest rate. So we'll take one so out just of here. I want you to hear that again because it's backwards from what you think we logically. Have, like the more money you borrow, the lower the rate. Interest rate. Not, Two loans under ten million yields a lower interest rate than one big bond. That's because the interest rates were yes. Up. Yes. But the ten million is the is the threshold for the lower. But rate. I had to see what the draw schedule was per year. Are we went are we under that ten million dollar mark to be able to take out less than ten million dollars? And and what are we not including that the total bond will be under? Per year. So until we know the exact particulars, but if I had to move forward, and, and I'm going to probably project that it would be two separate bonds, one in 24 and one in 25. You wouldn't want to borrow the money before you needed to use it. Okay. Okay. And the other question is do we all want to add any of the capital projects onto the bond money? That's well, as of right now, I would be interested just to see financing the school. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nothing else, just the financing of the school. So, and that's what you right. said. Nothing else. I think. We well, just to, to get look, an idea what the monthly ahead, payment. Is. Earlier, we looked at that ten-year plan. And I know some of the big things on there are the heating, yeah, or heating and HVAC system for this building here. That was around fourteen million, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. So, and it's going to go nothing but up. Is it something that we're looking at bonds anyways? Would it be better for us to look at another bond? To pay for that system and take care of it now. So, I mean, that's something it's going to get more expensive the more you push it out anyway. Right. But here's the other part of this question is the grant, the, the federal energy grant that we moved into the second round, but we didn't get it in the final round. There was one school in Pennsylvania that got it, it was William Penn School District. I knew there were several others that applied. I know Bradford applied and um, Allentown, Dara. Dara. So, um, and there may be some others in the Pittsburgh area. The question for you is, and Alyssa said, if you want to reapply, we can reapply this spring. We can modify the, the grant stuff any way you want to based on the feedback we've received back. You can reapply for that this spring. Again, there's no guarantee that you're going to get it. Um, but if that's the case, you should hold your match money that you budgeted. But if you decide, look, let's not, let's not hold out on a grant. Let's use the $2 million now. Let's reapply it to that project, to the HVAC project. That decision's going, whether or not to reapply for grant dollars and hold out for grant dollars. The only problem with that is you, you can't do that until like the earliest first of the year. That's, that is, waiting is going to hurt. Now, you really can't pay Five three oh five back to the spring when you get it done. Okay. So then you're sitting on that two million dollars right. right. for the whole school. And year you're basically. hoping to not use that, have that two million dollars in following year budgets. Remember, because that was right. a one-time grant right. match. Right. So you can apply to projects or you can say we'll keep rolling that, but you need to think about that two million dollars because that's an important amount of money. Yes. And then what we also did because we didn't get the grant is we remember we had moved forward anyway with the units one, two, and three at the high school. Purchase them purchasing them and we were going to put them in ourselves to save money but the cost of the brand, the cost of the project of putting them in is going to exceed the bid threshold so we're going to need to bid putting them in so there, there's no shortage of things to be done but what i need to know from you is do you want to reapply for the grant and hold on to your two million or do you want to think about reallocating it i would say you Use that. And I'm thinking that if you want to create a cost that would repair the cost that project, if you took that $2 million, that would cover your 
demo and a lot of your solid costs. And then you might be able to watch your money you're going to borrow in your bond, but could be a little bit less. And then if you want to do bonds for the HVAC process or project, project, yeah, go that direction along with it's in the third. You've got lots of options. Yeah. I just said, I know when we discussed that $2 million and we didn't get the grant work for the other I remember saying that the HVAC system needs to be placed. So whether we or get where? a grant or we pay for it, and then we pay for it, we're going to have to do it piecemeal. We can't afford the $13 million right now to do it, but we can pay and do maybe four or five of the units. And at the time, to try to get it done that way. At least if we left that $2 million in the budget, that would give us money that's earmarked for that HVAC system to be taken care of. But it's going to need replaced eventually, anyway. So. Well, an, an interesting piece of that, and you, neither of you were on the board when I first started. Uh, you were. Uh, I came before I actually started. We lost like seven of the units. We did temporary repairs. We said we were going to make it three years. Well, we're going on four and a half now. Uh, the the units that are up there, and I think it, it's kind of beating a dead horse. But we all know our end of life. I just okay. drove by Bel Well, I just drove by <laughs> Belfont High School. They have their rooftops. There's there's nine of them on the ground right now. Uh, they're fifty ton units. Most of ours are, are smaller than that that we have to replace. But there, that was from the 07 renovation of Belmont High School. I asked them, I said, why are you replacing those already? They said, they're 15 years and they are all failing. And I said, yeah, I have a bunch that are at 22 years and they're failing. And he said, well, all these are, we're doing uh, 10 a year because we have to, because they're all failing. It's not just us. It's this 15 year thing I'm telling you on these rooftops, that's what people are getting. <laughs> And so we're really on borrowed time on some of that. So that's where those options you guys have to really think about. Rob has never not said that was his biggest concern. <laughs> well, I lose sleep over the, the high school because this is our biggest building, most kids, and we have two or three of those rooftop units fail. We can't we leave have the building. New classes out of there. Um, I remember last spring we I walked into a classroom that was so hot. I said, Why are you still in here? And we moved them into the cafeteria to finish classes for the day because it was entirely too hot for anyone to be in there. Interesting, Butch. 07 units were the same vintage Aon units are on uh, Renova and Mill Hall. They and bought them at the same time. It, well, it, we all bought Aon units at the same time. 06, 07 was that renovation at Belfont High School. 07 was Seven, four, Renova seven, and then 08 over here or somewhere in those time frames. It's all those units are failing. Numbers. That's the small one you walk by all the time. That's the first one that failed. I ask them what the failure is, coil. So that's exactly what we're failing. It's as much to replace the coil as it is to place the unit. Do you think the new models? No. Or <laughs> no, they're no better. <laughs> they're 15, no, 15 years. Made the last. They're made to throw away in 15 years. If they're made to last, you wouldn't have to pay to replace mm -hmm. it. Completely out of business. Well, that's something, I mean, not. I'm, I'm drifting, I'm sorry, but that's something I'm really between your architect discussions. Does that air circulation, air flow, the filtering system is gonna it's gonna come in at like not zero, okay, net gain, but um, you know, we didn't talk about solar there, we haven't talked about anything there yet. We've we've been having conversations about rainwater um, collection to help flush the toilets and certain water sewer costs there. Um, We've been looking at some of that and also the hard water there. We've been looking at run system for the building to help preserve the pipe. So we have been having yeah, a lot of those preliminary conversations. And I think that solar right, so is getting to the point where solar should start to come into the conversations but, there. Okay, but, so we can't get away from these, depending on these dinosaurs sitting on the roof. I know we need them. We're still going to have. To, I know. We, I know. We're still going to have the units that they may be powered by the solar, but we're still going to have the units. They don't right. make a unit that's. But I will is, also say a lot of what I've been hearing from the floor too is that a lot of and that uh, solar company is that a lot of school districts have gone away from putting solar on a roof. 
Right. Because the yeah. roofs are only lasting 20 years. Mm -hmm. and the solar oh, I know. Yeah. For 30. No, no, yeah. We, we, we mm -hmm. solar field. Putting them over parking right. lots. Well, we're on my, I'm sorry, we're drifting. But anyways, so, oh, so the you're talking about the $2 million. Four and five. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. We, the, the, the 200 million, um, we don't have proof, but um, two million, two million. I'm yeah. sorry, yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish. Um, <laughs> I don't have proof, but unless we get Representative Berowitz and the other gentlemen 100 percent for the solar project and champion it behind, you know, on our behalf, I don't think it's bigger than that. I think it's even the uh, Fred Keller, at least the bigger ones. But again, with the grant application, there was nowhere for that. But again, look at look at what school will got it. I know, I know. So again, location. It's supposed to be for us, the rural schools, and yet the money still flows to the burbs. Well, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Unless those individuals are really yeah. going to champion it, writing in the grant. We were here. really encouraged, though, the fact that we got moved forward. The number of schools that got moved forward. I was... that except for that, that component person who's talking behind the, you know, the lobbyists. Okay, moving yeah. right along. So wait, am I hearing what sorry. what do you want us to do? Do you want us to come back to you with a narrow down the options on two smaller bonds across two different school years, figure out what the bond payment structure would be to fit into what we budgeted originally, which I feel like is somewhere in the neighborhood of a quarter million dollars a year in payments until we get to the six years out where your other bond payments drop off. So that again, it gives you consistency across yeah. multiple years. Yeah, I think it's considered kind of that. It makes sense to do that with a two year thing, especially with the way we're going to be paying out for the construction, the drawdown. Yeah. So My that makes more sense. Do you want us to do look we use 18 million? Do we use 20 million? Nothing over 20 million is what I'm hearing. So nine. Well, I would feel better discussing it next month after we go through the facility's major priority list. Well, well, what we're trying to do now is we're trying to get that number down. So regardless of how we budget, we're still going to try to get that number down. So what I'm thinking is, and I think it will come down like that. I don't think he had an exact cost to the project manager, but it was like a million dollars, wasn't it? I, I haven't I seen feel it. Like it, was it was high. It was high. And I so could... I feel like that's going to come down. Some of these other okay. finishes things are going to come down a little bit. He knows they need to come down. Um, so I think that's good. I feel like bidding those alternates is actually going to help us in the bidding process because companies are going to want it palatable enough for you to do it. It's going to be easier for them to do it while they're already there working. So they're going to come in with a better price and the whole big thing. Okay. Um, what I feel like we could do for you is we could, between now and next month, mm -hmm. come back with an option that if the building project was at $19 million, right. How would we do that across two two years, years? And in the end, you never actually borrow that money until like the final numbers come in after we know. And then so our numbers, if anything, would go lower than that. So we'd give you worst case scenario on how to do that. In the meantime, separately, I think I'd like to work with Rob and Joni on how if we were to not apply for the grant and hold on to the two million dollars. What would the high school project look like based on the one, two, three that we have? Let's reprice that project either in whole or in piecemeal so that you could see the difference. And if you wanted to roll any of that money into a bond or how you wanted to do it um, would be up to you. You could then decide to hold your $2 million or you could decide use your $2 million for your demolition or for your installation of your HVAC or for your... That's what, you know, yeah, your site think, work, your other stuff yeah, that you pay cash out for. I just think, you have it. In my mind, I'm looking at rolling the $2 million into the HVAC system, sort of like we did with paving and the, what we used to do with the doors. We did so many a year. $2 million would pay for what, maybe 25% of the, of the HVAC sure. system is building. And we keep doing that every year, and four years will be done. By then, we might need some at the middle school or other school, and this continues on the other one. Are they, are they going to be able to get more than it is out? That's that the original the number you came up with, Rob. I think it's 13 million. To that was the original the floor number. Uh, there's, there's some pieces that become that convolute 
that $13 million number. And when I say that, not in the sense of if we're piecemealing it together, how we have to do that, because we may look at keeping these noisy units versus changing those units and stay with a chill water system versus using a heat pump system. There's some pieces in the design because if you do it all at once versus doing it in a in a piecemeal fax may change how we have to do the design. And that $13 million number will hover somewhere around there. I don't know if it's going to go higher or lower, but I need to uh, sit down with, I was going to sit down with McClure and have some of those conversations because if we're going to continue down that piece milling road, I have to replace the chiller. We know the chiller, we we can't keep. But that's less energy efficient. Yes. So So how much money do you think you could save if you went to a heat pump system? Yeah, the, those are all, the, the, that's why I say it's convoluted. And, and there's no simple answer to it. And I've tried to explain it to Dr. Martin and Joni and, and some different things. And they just look at me and say, just wait, wait, wait. But uh there, there's a bunch of pieces to it, and it's just not. I can't give you a, a real clear answer. And you start talking about the energy efficiency piece of it, and that looks like a long term payout. And there's some other pieces, and we, and that's where we'll we can bring the chlorine and they you want they to go run. back to them and ask them for an updated. And well, I think we the work that we've done and where we are, and maybe package it with a solar project just for one building. That could give us some other options. It's it's a conversation that is like in the past. I I'm not, I don't want to be one of the board members that did the patch job. I agree. And yeah. and knowing that down the road, like we're doing now, you know, this cooling system. I understand why they put it in. Then I understand it, but the heat pump. I mean, and 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 if and if. Did, did Shapiro, or did they ever decide? Are they doing that facilities yeah. money? They have to we'll see. That's the thing. They have they have formally announced that yet. There may be money next year. So they're talking like playing like cards. Yeah, well, it's, it's like playing so cards. It, yeah. It's different. Yeah. But back to what Dr. Martin was asking, as far as the uh, the bond thing, and we ha we can take a bond this year. And if we keep it under 10 million, and then we can take one next year, we'll take it under 10 million. And I don't know if, if that's been clear. I haven't been in all your facility or the, these meetings, but it's cheaper if you do it two bonds, but it has to be over two years. Uh, if we start now, it's going to take us until December to get that bond through. So is even if we said we're not building livery curtain, which we can't not do, we would end up that bond that we took would end up going into some other facility here. So do we start that bond now? Potentially, because you have three years to spend the bond money. Right. And do, but what I'm saying is to keep Liberty Curtain on track, are we going to start? When should the bond actually, when should the I think that make we, a motion? We're going to have to make that motion soon because is it, because no, how much time do, do you need? November. You have one meeting in December. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Do we do we, if we move it forward in the September meeting? Well, we have to come. So you're getting a little bit. Okay. Of, you're, you're I'm sorry. Of, you're kind of there, but I mean, our original plan and with the project was that we were going to look at approving the project and getting bids in November. So by at that point, if you're going to do bonds to pay for the building, then you obviously would have to approve the bond uh, work as well by then. Right. And so backward, I, what I hear you say is we're backward mapping, but we're losing time. Right. Well, I, yeah, well, I'm <laughs> we looking at... about this in September. We still have to get the bond, can't make a decision in September. Then we would have to You'd have October, October and November to get something approved by the board. So we're still on target, but that's why we wanted some direction from you now. So what can we bring back to you next month? <laughs> I just have one last question. So your priorities for your units are on here. I, well, we some... have one, two, and three are the worst ones. There's two of them sitting where, on the ground. Where are they here? They are in that 700,000. They are on there. It's, 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 it's labeled out there. It's on light 19. It's in here. It says root so top control priority. units one, two, three. Stay in the plan that the RAS grant is dead. And he has it as the district priority number one. The line is 19 is pavement overlay. Yeah, it's it's down one. One under that. What, bro, rooftop controls. You know what? Oh, it's tw okay. Tw I'm sorry. Is that the it's the seven hundred thousand dollar line item? It's in there. Okay. Yeah, it's on there. 
And then down below, though, there's the HVAC replacement, 15 million. And, and it says to be determined. So that's line nine of 23. Yeah, you and I are off a line item, but I don't. Oh, yeah, it okay. might be the way so it's printed. Well, I took that other line out from the note. That's why mine jumped up. Oh, yeah, you did. Okay, I so took it out. 15 million <laughs> for the HVA replacement. Yeah, but if we that's that the, the includes the 700 or some. That, the solar project. No, that's that, the, no. HVAC, the total HVAC replacement plus a solar project. So if we go there, the 700,000 comes out up top. If we scrap the 15 million, the 700,000 has to stay in. Okay. So bottom line, you need minimum 700,000. Yes. ASAP. To get one, one, two, and three put in. ASAP, yeah. you need 700,000. Okay. So what he's saying is, what I hear you saying, I think what you're getting to is if you would like to see us in this first grant budget enough to get this HVAC system one, two, and three done. And that's only to purchase the unit. That's not the installation. installation. No, one, two, and three are purchased. The installation on those three units, because they need the, all the hot water stuff done underneath for the some of the efficiency stuff, the BAVs, all that stuff, it gets done underneath. It is never put in. Uh, it's not in the building. It's not. No, it's like, not. The no, we ordered the units. We, they're here, but the, it's the VAV systems, the controls, all the other stuff that goes into the installation of them. Now we don't have those. No, we we don't. We didn't buy them. Now there's some options. We can put them back in one to one, like like it is now. We still have to do some work for the VAVs. Right now, if this room, that room, and that room are all calling for, or one's calling for heat, two are calling for cooling, they're all getting cooled. There's they they cut out all the BABs and they put these. That's you, you've heard them clicking over here in the in the thing. They're all failing. So in the prices we've got in the prices to, to correct everything that's underneath that's not on the roof with that, and that's what's in the seven hundred thousand. Okay. Uh, so that means each room can be individually they, they have yeah. controls through the main frame, not yeah. from the person here. Yeah. So we, we pick up the efficiencies and all that. So so what I hear you saying is bringing back some options to you for next month. Yes. Yes. I think, <laughs> I think we'd be that would be best if we did helpful. do the, the two. I think working on one for the 23 year, having it done before, I would say November would be good. So getting it on, put it on by November so we can get the bond done this time of year or this year. Like you said, it gives us three years of spend it, which we're in the window of the limited current project. So I'm, I'm, I just think probably, like I said earlier, ten million each would be the route we're taking. Do you have any idea where you want to go with this grant? And even though you can wait and decide until the spring, as we start developing next year's budget, we're going to need to know what you want us to do. So we're going to need to know sooner rather than later what you want to do with that energy grant. If you spend two million dollars on updating the HVAC, can you include that as your match money? No, no, mm -hmm. no, it's, no it's, that's we're going to have to rewrite the project because some of the projects yeah. aren't included. Okay. Oh, I I don't see getting the solar project uh, unless we have the, the state and federal representatives backing us hundred percent. So I would, me personally, if those conversations took place and we got letters from them. Or they came into a Zoom meeting and the public meeting says, absolutely, I'm going to champion this for your district. I would feel really good about it. Um, otherwise, I, I don't think you could write the best grant possible. And I think personally, well, I'm not a grant writer, but well, I, mean, well, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think that's the other piece of this, too, is like the, the amount of time and energy going into it. And you're going to have a new superintendent that's going to be responsible for that because that's going to be due after my time. And also... Again, maybe this is a just the PSBA. We've never, and I don't want to. I really don't. It's not the time They're to not talk. Grant about. writers. I know, but they have the third party, which we've never. We have used the third party, and all like, yeah. We. I will say, I don't think that they the service that we got from them was really super beneficial. It was really informing us and what's out there, and everything that we got from them, we got right. from three other locations and emails. I think. Kind of agree with Elizabeth write. a little bit that we can have, and I think we had a really strong grant application to make everything work. But he keeps saying the legislature, but part of it, it's the votes. 
if we don't have the votes, we dictate the legislator. And that's where they, they send the money where they get their votes. That's a problem. We, we don't have them here in this, this area. Is, and this is a federal grant. Yeah. Right? So you'd have to take, talk to G.T. Thompson or somebody that's like that, that has the club down there in Washington. Well, it's not that we can't. I mean, any yeah. of our board members have though the ability to talk to them about supporting them. I mean, it's... <laughs> we, well, that's why as a group, we vote. decide... If we're going to do that, then we have to have a but, crew. Game. What he just said is it's it's the votes that they carry. And this area doesn't carry enough votes for those guys for re-election. So, but if he knows the guy who's on the committee. But that guy already wants it for Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. I, but that's what I'm saying. He could find out for us. So, you know, it doesn't cost us anything to talk to them. It's probably benefit us more than not talking to them. Mm -hmm. I, you're right. I mean, I, I think it was an outstanding grant. I mean, I think Alyssa and, and everybody that worked on it did a tremendous job. And I don't know how we're going to improve it a whole lot. And when you're, you're fighting against the big city areas, I mean, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia and yeah, but we're, we're, I mean, we, we're, we got down to, I think, six in the state what Alyssa said too is we are not as poor as some of the other districts we're more rural than some of the other districts that apply but we're not as poor on paper so like William Penn was more poor than us if you can believe that and uh, Dira is more poor than us but we're more rural than Dira so the parameters of the grant and again it depends on those reviewers and the review two of the three reviewers gave us outstanding comments one third the other one said that we didn't involve clergy yeah, we didn't involve clergy in our community piece, and we should have invited clergy from the area. Do what? Come in and bless them? <laughs> no, no, seriously, what, what would a clergy? Well, but that's what I'm saying. Because, there are, who are because white people in rural areas, those are the leaders of the community. Baptist church. I, I guess my point to you is the reviewers have a lot of control over it. And they're all looking for certain things, and certain mm -hmm. words. Yeah, I don't know. I've never heard one of them. One of them said that we did. One of them said that we did not. Um, that we were talking about how the solar would improve the quality of the air quality in the area because we're not emit, emitting, you know, dangerous stuff. But they said we didn't include a pre-level. Oh, data of quality. We get the. But that was only people, one of the three was worried about that. The other two were like, no, this is awesome. Well, but, he's, but if, if the other school district or DEP has a partnership program, they'll put up CO2 and, and VOC monitors and they'll monitor it for you. But that is, but that's really good stuff though. That's data. They, and that just, um, well, anyways. Yeah, but we don't necessarily yeah, think we of don't know what data they're going to be. Yeah. We can do everything they But it's in their grant. It looks like you can look off. historically and see what data they ask for now, but you don't know who's going to be we reviewing next, next year and what they want next year. So, yeah. Yeah. so I, you guys right. have to make the decision of whether you want to do that, and we just need your direction. We'll do what you ask us to do. Um, but it, I still say yes as long as we commit to. Fishing and talking to people outside of this room. By we, we mean you, right? Because, like, I'm not going to be here to do that. And well, right now, the, the, board, jobs. the board to decide. And that's what we have the, the legislative talk. meetings for. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what it's supposed to be for. I think you could, as a board, you could determine who should go out and, and ask for a meeting with those officials and talk to them specifically about this grant and how they can be supportive. And they may and just say, is there any way that you can support us or how could you support us? And have that conversation with them. I think it's worth a meeting with them, um, and then see what you get from there. But you could maybe um, ask a couple of board members to to circle up and try to get on their schedule. I think the next round is going to be a lot more competitive than it was this round. We were way ahead of the curve because For we had already been working with our ten year plan. Has we had all this stuff in place, and knows. everybody's saying, "Well, you should be doing this, this, and this." And Jackie's saying, "Oh no, we already applied for that. We already have. We already done with all this. We were way ahead of the curve." So instead of two thousand places, now, now there's going to be ten thousand. to get in. Everybody's that's, waiting. Now. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Whoever has the. Oh, oh, I agree. I just think the next round is going to be We have another meeting at 6 o'clock. I wouldn't mind yeah. getting something even before that. Yeah. Uh, energy rate box? Yes. Yeah. So our energy contract was a three-year contract, and it is up in December of this year. <laughs> so we had anticipated when we did the budget that we 
made assumptions that there would be an increase. I, Is it just electricity or electricity and gas? Yeah, both. Yeah, both. Yeah. both. Just to give you an idea, and we are talking to um, several different uh, vendors, UGI is who we currently have, and we are talking to him. But just to give you an example of where it might go, um, we had a contract uh, for gas for both Central Mountain and Middle School and the high school, the two biggest buildings. And just to give you an idea, it was 2.959 um, decatherm, gases are dec decatherm. That was 2.959 at the current rate that is Six. being 4.399. Oh, that's so not as bad as I thought. 2.9 to 4.3. No, it's what I'm more for homeowners. Yeah. J j just to give you an idea, exactly. So then for the, all the other buildings, it went from 4.6 to 6.6. .6. And then for electric, um, it than... went from 0 0.053 to 0 0.088. So That's, again, this you is start selling it to me of... because I got. Well, yeah, the, well those, those, are, those are projected numbers. Do we have to lock in? So here's how this works. <laughs> um, you have to lock in very quickly. So this is more of a heads up. These are the kind of rates that we're looking at. Once we make the decision of, you know, get the, the vendors and get the, the, part, the quotes in, um, it'll have to have to happen very quickly. They'll walk in, they'll need to know in a day. And then then they go out and, and put it out a bit, so I guess. We're looking and then at the in. September. It could, it could be. Um, I'm waiting to get back um, one additional quote from actually from Penn State, but they only do Gas. They only do electric. They only do electric, not gas. There's, and that's that's co-stars. Co so we're trying to weigh in where where our best pricing will be. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up that we're working on this. I I feel. I mean, I'm sorry. I, no, I don't know the other prices out there. Of course, I, I think they'll be very comparable. The, this is market rate. What, what this, he's quoting us are the market compared rates. to what happened to me or my household. That's, I mean, I was used to pay $75, $65 in the summertime. I'm paying 105 yeah. and I've gone down 4% in my monthly usage. Right. Figure that one out. Yeah. 25 bucks a yeah. month. Yes. So yeah, it's, um, we have till December. We have to vote on that. We will do that. The, okay. the issue is going to be, I, I have to know in a day. I don't know if there will be. So that's would you why recommend it's, that we give you permission. permission to go ahead and uh, it's a more of a blessing because we tried to look back to see if the board had to approve the rate lock. But if you do, we can't find anywhere that you. And if I recall, yes, I remember previously. Susan doing this three years ago, and I feel like she just told you, "Hey, I'm watching it, and I'm going to lock it in, and here's where it is." So that's where we are. We, we Joni needs to be able to have We're not the spending any money. No, you know, she just needs to lock the rate. Yeah, you just need and to be it's budgeted. She I mean, it's budgeted. So budgeted while we put on as information item for the September yeah. meeting, and, mm -hmm. and that's fine. That, and that's again mm -hmm. transparency. Let you know this yeah. kind of where the rates it's are. Perfect. We put on information. We'll go there. The last painting. thing, super quickly, want to thank you for the line cleaner because apparently it's amazing, and it painted an entire soccer field in twenty minutes. Would have, would have taken four guys how many hours? <laughs> <laughs> so if you get and a chance to see the um, robotic painter, I should. I did share with these guys that I talked with Fred Hoy yesterday, and we're going to involve his students in the, the whole stuff with Total Station and GPS and how it works and how this thing works. So we're going to make it an educational piece, too. So Good. I'm what happy with that. It's going to be. What are you doing, Marco? I think they were up there. They painted some of it, I think. I think it's the football's painted. Can I, can I we're struggling my, with I the saw, GPS thing. I thought I saw the. Like the practice fields were done. I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're struggling with the GPS signal up there. I'm going to work with IT here this week to figure out how we're going to get the GPS. We have great cell signal, but we're not. We're we're struggling with the GPS signal, but that's. I'll work with those guys. We're going to get this work. It's still so cool. Signal. So but cool. I, I I'm really happy that Fred was all excited about it because he uses the same technology with total stations for surveying and some of that stuff. And so getting this, the kids will get to see how that works. And I got to talk with Kurt about it. Obviously, I need to talk to Dr. Mark a little bit about it, but usually I just go with those guys and we we do like a a, a one one class or one day out there with them and show. Okay. So, well, it was, I, 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 I might take longer to learn. 
you know, actually, it, it was really amazing. You take Big Bob, which Big Bob. he would throw, he would throw a computer through. He was so involved in listening to what this guy said and figuring out how it worked, and just the buy-in from those guys. I was I was blown away by that because I figured these guys are going to fight it, you know. Right. But they they were totally bought into it and listening, and they they can't wait to run it. The whole works. And I mean, Big Bob literally has taken computers and busted them over, you know, the desk, not our computers, his own, and threw it out, you know. So to see him buy into it like that, it's pretty neat. But. Well, Bob's, Bob has moved from the 19th to the 21st century ever since he started. <laughs> no, since he started no, working here. Okay. It, well, he wasn't old. He's he, up to a rotting over now. So he, yeah. You know, he okay. fixed everything else. himself, you know. Made it himself. Thank you. Next meeting will be the same thing at three o'clock after the thank you. Thank you.